Hey, what's up? I'm joined here by Richard, who's the creative director uh, for Splash Damage. Splash Damage. How you doing, sir? Very good. Awesome. So we're here to talk about Brink. I just caught a demo of it. It looks pretty awesome. What's what's going on with the story? What's what's Brink all about? Okay. Well, basically, um, Brink is set on the Ark, which was basically a prototype city built out at sea that was supposed to be uh, the perfect future. You know, total green living, renewable resources. Um, you know, uh, the whole nine yards. It was absolutely fantastic, and everything was going great until Al Gore's greatest nightmare came to pass. And um, you know, that Ross ice shelf, whatever it was, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and overnight, what was basically this little community that could. Make maybe house about 5,000 people with all this kind of prototype technology, mm -hmm. um, suddenly has to house almost 50,000. And when the game opens, we've cut to about 30 years later, a whole generation has grown up in this tight little enclave, you know, just shoulder to shoulder with, you know, the super rich and the super poor, you know, within spitting distance of each other. And at the beginning of the game, the whole place is literally on the brink, hence the title, Aha! of an all-out civil war. Awesome. So one of the things I noticed, I mean, it's first-person shooter, but uh, it looks like navigation's not going to be a problem because of the smart system. That looked uh, really smart. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> that means the PR is doing its job. Um, obviously, we didn't actually have a name for the button, and the PR guy said, we'll call it SMART. Somebody come up with an acronym. It stands for, let me see if I got this, SMART Movement Across Random Terrain. And um, basically what it's all about is trying to solve the problems you get in first-person shooters where, well, basically you don't have that sense that you and I have of, you know, I mean, you kind of know that I'm kind of kicking you right now with my foot or I'm about to. Right. Just because you have that sense I, I of awareness. I sort of see it. I'm yeah, like, this interview is getting weird yes. here. Um, but, you know, you, you don't, you, you're, you're a horse with blinders and a shooter, of course. Right. Um, so you, 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 it's so easy to get caught up. I mean, if you were actually in this particular room in a shooter, I mean, you'd be stalling over this thing. I mean, it, it'd be terrible. And that's fine. Obviously, players are really used to it. But what we do is, if you're in a situation and you hold that button down, you're basically signaling to the you're signaling to the game that you want the game to take care of that. Hey, you know what? I've got a really long jump here. Um, I don't want to have to run around looking at the floor, waiting until the right moment to press. I just want you to jump at the right moment. Right. And when I reach out at the end, I want you to grab that edge. I don't want to have to make a you know, perfect time grab um, because that's not why I'm here. That's I'm playing the game to have fun kicking ass and taking names. Yeah. I'm not um, playing the game to have fun trying to scramble around a conference room and trip over all the yeah, chairs. Like na navigate chairs and all yeah. that stuff. Exactly. So it's not really the core of our game. It's basically to get all the crap out of the way so you can have fun playing the core of our game, which is a kick-ass shooter. Cool. So let's talk about the core a little bit. It seems like it is a class-based shooter. Yes, with the, the, kind of all the, the multiplayer hooks you would expect of, of that sort of thing, but the classes are then applied to the single player. Yeah. Well, actually, the interesting thing is when you first start the game and you're on the title screen, one thing you will not see is, would you like to play single player or multiplayer? That's not an option. That's not an interesting choice for us. Would you just like to play the game? What happens is you, um, you basically, you're looking, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the mission, like, say, that Container City mission you just saw a few right. minutes ago. Oh, it's available. Okay, I'm just going to ahead and jump right on in. And by default, you know, maybe you're going to play online or offline just by yourself. But you know what? Um, we'll actually do a check and see, oh, hey, yeah, one of your Xbox Live friends or your PSN friends or your Steam friends is actually in there right now. Why don't you jump in with him? Or, you know, or jump into his party if you're, if you're using the party system. Uh, of course, because it's still going to be that same mission. Um, right. You'll just be filling in, you know, one of the slots of, that was on his team. Um, basically, we expect a lot of players are gonna, you know, kind of, we're kind of like a gateway drug to multiplayer gaming. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, so they'll start out single player. We'll be tracking them, see how well they're doing, uh -huh. and there will come a point in the game when we think, you know what, you're ready, and we're actually gonna stop the game, talk directly to the player, and say, you know what, we know you're a little nervous. You've maybe had some bad experiences with <laughs> online shooters before. You know, maybe had a few racial slurs thrown your way, who knows what? That never happens um, yeah. online. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. But what we're here to tell you is, you can do it. Go on ahead, the next mission, try it online. We'll bribe you, we'll pay you twice as much experience, so just give it a try. Oh, wow. No harm. Yeah. And, um, and what I think what will happen is a lot of players will go and say, wow, this isn't so bad. Because what's been happening is, they didn't realize we were training them and actually breaking them of a lot of bad habits. Like, you know what? I'm the hero of the universe. Everything waits for me. It's not until I take three steps forward that um, you know the explosion will happen. Um, you're not the center of the universe. You are on a team and you've right. got a role to play. And by getting the player really comfortable with that and realizing, hey, we're all equals, when they go online, they'll be better teammates. Cool. Now, in addition to that, is there like a separate, more kind of 
dedicated traditional multiplayer mode, or does it all kind of take place in the single player world? Um, well, actually, we look at it the other way. It all takes place in the multiplayer world. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with Splash Damage's background, the yeah. enemy territory games, you know, which are obviously hugely big, it's amazing. Um, enemy territory, Wolfenstein is still buying for, as a general rule, like in the top three online PC shooters. Right. It's huge, and 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 the reason for that is because of the gameplay that Splash Damage has always been known for. All this objective-based multiplayer gameplay. The interesting thing about that that makes it so special compared to normal capture the flag stuff is it is kind of story driven. It's all about putting context into a multiplayer experience. Right. We're not all just trying to capture the flag and it's all, you know, some objectives that lead to the Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it has kind of this natural flow that makes it really, really com um, compatible with single player. So that's where, for us, the uh, you know the bare bones basic the architecture we're building on is our kick-ass multiplayer, mm -hmm. and then opening doors and getting rid of barriers that would um, you know keep a single player fan from wanting to come in. But you can, I mean, a lot of our players aren't even going to have live, and we know that. So they're going to have a fantastic single player experience playing through two complete campaigns. Because um, you know, as you heard from before, the story there's two sides of the civil war, yeah, and you will choose which side you want to play. Um, and you will see things from that point of view. And when that is over, you will then take that character and play through the other side. And you will see things from a completely different point of view. So there's a really, there's a lot of gameplay to be had. And you know, once you finish both campaigns, you know, you're going to be level 10, level 11. And right. you still got a long ways to go. A and plenty lot. of stuff to unlock. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, this is definitely a game that keeps on giving. Cool. And uh, when can we expect it to come out? When it's ready. Um, I, everybody loves to hear that. Yeah, no, no, no. that's um, everyone's favorite first-person shooter yes, response. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Done. <laughs> but um, we're right now we're shooting for spring 2010, um, and we're, we're we're doing pretty well. I mean, you saw the demo. It's uh, it's pre-alpha, but. Um, the thing is, I mean, Splash Damage knows what it's doing. I mean, they've got a really huge pedigree. We're working with tech that they've been building for years now. Right. And uh, so we're really confident. Cool. Richard, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, that's great.